This is Ilgar. At today's book talk, I am going to discuss Margaret Mitchell's Gone with the Wind as the last novel of our ten American classics. Margaret Munnerlyn Mitchell, an American novelist and journalist, was born on November 8, 1900 in Atlanta, Georgia. Her life was tragically cut short when she was struck by a car and killed on August 16, 1949. Her novel, Gone with the Wind, won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1937. Set in the American South, Gone with the Wind is a sprawling epic that spans several years and encompasses the lives of many characters against the backdrop of the American Civil War and Reconstruction era. The novel begins in 1861 in Georgia, with Scarlett O'Hara living on a plantation called Tara. She is the headstrong, beautiful and vivacious daughter of a Georgia plantation owner, and her world revolves around parties, bows, and the pursuit of happiness. She has green eyes, dark hair, and a magnetic presence, and possesses a charm that captivates men and women alike, but her beauty and charm are accompanied by a stubborn and selfish nature. Scarlet is infatuated with Ashley Wilkes, a refined and honorable gentleman who is to marry her cousin, Melanie Hamilton. Despite her infatuation for Ashley, Scarlet marries Melanie's brother, Charles. Their marriage is short-lived as Charles dies in the war. As the Civil War rages on, Scarlet's comfortable life at Terra is shattered. The plantation falls into disrepair, and Scarlet is forced to confront the harsh realities of war and its impact on her family and community. After the sudden death of her father, she faces the challenges of managing Terra and keeping her family's plantation afloat. Rhett Butler, a charismatic and enigmatic man who is drawn to her spirit and beauty, enters Scarlet's life in a significant way. Highlighting his charm and his attraction to her, Rhett says, you should be kissed, and often, and by someone who knows how. As the war continues, Scarlet's determination to save Tara becomes her driving force. I don't care what you say, only give me the money. I won't let Tara go, I can't let her go while there's a breath left in my body. During Reconstruction, Scarlet's ambition and resourcefulness lead her to build a successful business empire. She becomes a shrewd businesswoman and gains financial independence. She resorts to any means necessary to keep the plantation running, including marrying Frank Kennedy, a wealthy older man. Tragedy strikes when Frank is killed and Scarlet becomes a widow again, now with Frank's young child. At Frank's funeral, Red asks Scarlet to marry him. She accepts and shortly thereafter scandalizes the city by dancing joyfully while still dressed in widow's mourning. Later, Scarlet and Rhett announce their engagement, which becomes the talk of the town. They marry and spend a lavish honeymoon in New Orleans. Upon returning to Atlanta, the couple build a showy new mansion on Peachtree Street, the most prominent in the city. Shortly after moving into the house, the sardonic jabs between the couple turn into outright quarrels. Red is disillusioned by Scarlet's continued obsession with Ashley and her coldness toward him. Finally realizing that Red is the one who truly understands her, she is shocked to realize that she has always loved Red Butler and that he has loved her in return. She is finally brimming with new love and determined to begin anew with him. But too late. At the end of their tumultuous relationship, and signifying his complete disillusionment, Rhett famously tells Scarlet when she asks Rhett what she will do, and where she will go, responds, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The novel's climax occurs during a period of personal and societal upheaval, as Scarlet experiences devastating losses and confronts the harsh realities of her own actions. The final line of the novel, after all, Tomorrow is Another Day, spoken by Scarlett O'Hara, reflects her resilience and determination to face the challenges of life with hope and renewed determination. Is another day. Throughout the story, Scarlett undergoes a significant transformation as she experiences the trials of war and its aftermath. She evolves from a carefree and self-centered young woman to a resilient and resourceful survivor who adapts to the changing world around her. Scarlet's complexity lies in her contradictions. 
While she can be manipulative, cunning, and driven by her own self-interest, she also displays moments of vulnerability, compassion, and fierce loyalty to her loved ones. She is willing to do whatever it takes to protect her family and secure her own well-being, even if it means sacrificing others. The novel's greatest strength lies in its captivating protagonist, Scarlett O'Hara. Mitchell masterfully developed Scarlett's character, showcasing her resilience, ambition, and unwavering determination to survive against all odds. Scarlett's transformation from a headstrong young woman to a shrewd businesswoman is compelling, and her tumultuous relationships with Rhett Butler and Ashley Wilkes provide the novel's strong emotional core. While she embodies both admirable and flawed personality traits, Scarlett remains an enduring figure in literature due to the compelling exploration of her character's development. Gone with the Wind is not only a love story but also a powerful exploration of social, political, and racial issues during a tumultuous period in American history. It delves into the complexities of human nature, the consequences of war, and the endurance of the human spirit. Gone with the Wind was adapted into a highly acclaimed film in 1939. Directed by Victor Fleming and produced by David O. Selznick, the film starred Vivian Lee as Scarlett O'Hara and Clark Gable as Rhett Butler. The movie received critical acclaim and became a cinematic masterpiece, winning eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The film faithfully captures the epic scope of the novel and brings the characters and their struggles to life on the big screen. It showcases the opulence of the Old South, the devastation of the Civil War, and the tumultuous relationships of the main characters. Vivian Lee's portrayal of Scarlett O'Hara is considered one of the greatest performances in cinematic history. It was ranked fourth on the American Film Institute's 2007 list of the 100 greatest American films of all time. Margaret Mitchell's vivid prose and intricate storytelling paint a vivid picture of a bygone era, capturing both the grandeur and tragedy of the time. However, the novel is not without its flaws. One cannot overlook the problematic racial portrayals and the romanticized depiction of the antebellum South. The African-American characters are most often relegated to subservient roles, and their experiences are overshadowed by the narrative focus on Scarlett and her struggles. In 1936, the year when the novel, Gone with the Wind, was published, J. Donald Adams in his New York Times book review said, This is beyond a doubt one of the most remarkable first novels produced by an American writer. It is also one of the best. I would go so far as to say it is, in narrative power, in sheer readability, surpassed by nothing in American fiction. This book talk will end our introduction to ten American classics. Text was edited by Mary Rose Waldron.